Shen, and today I'll be presenting plurality, high resolution, untethered haptic flows using electrodes modded pumpers. Here's the team of researchers behind this work, and as a quick note, Tucker is currently applying to PhDs, and Craig is starting a new haptic interaction lab at UIUC, and he's looking for PhDs. So, uh, now let's get into this work. There are a lot of haptic clubs out there right now. This is a figure from a 2021 review of only commercial haptic clubs, not even including research prototypes. They focus on various different types of haptics, like force feedback and vibration, etc. We've narrowed down the three most closely related haptic glove systems to ours, which focus on fine grained haptics. Here we see the DK2, which along with the newer version G1, come from a company called HaptX. And here's a prototype out of the Meta Reality Labs, which was featured in a recent video. Let's take a closer look at these systems. We estimate that TK2's entire system to weigh over 30 kilograms and cost around 75,000 to buy. The gloves must be tethered to a backpack, dependent on wall power and external pumps. The G1 makes some advances, dropping the weight down to 17 kilograms and costing $6,000, although with a mandatory $500 per month fee. Here, as advertised, three hours of power is provided by the backpack, which is still tethered to the gloves. As for that meta prototype, we estimate it weighing more than 25 kilograms and costing upwards of $15,000, with significantly less individual tactors per glove. This glove is also tethered to an external system of pumps, which requires wall power. In this work, we prototyped a brand new haptic glove system. Fluid reality is lightweight, weighing in at only 0.2 kilograms. It costs less than $1,000 to make, and we're able to achieve 160 haptic pixels. Our glove can operate completely untethered, with the battery pack providing up to three hours of power. Here you can see a close-up of our glove on the hand. After removing the outer cloth layer, we reveal our high-resolution haptic shape rates. We have no tubes or wires running out to external infrastructure, and have all the electronics, including the battery pack, strapped to the wrist. And here's a close-up of all the components of our system laid out on a table, with the haptic arrays actuating in real time. Uh, please come try the reality at the demo session later today. Quick plug. Uh, before we dive into the implementation, let me first talk about the working principle behind electrodes modded flow. When a fluid is at rest, charged particles are scattered within it. And when a solid is introduced to that fluid, a layer of charge formed, a layer of charge formed on the solid fluid interface called the electrical double layer. By introducing an electric field, a flow is induced proportional to the voltage and polarity. This flow viscously couples to the rest of the fluid and moves it, happening at a nanometer scale. This induced flow is enough to displace, for example, a silicon membrane placed on top, and we refer to this as an electrosmotic one. Uh, this is from an earlier work that I know some of you in the audience have, had, that have, have been able to try. So our work utilizes the same phenomenon with our own custom hardware. We start with a silicon reservoir, which holds the fluid that pumps and inflates the membrane. We lie the bottom PCB on top of this, and we add a layer of pressure-sensitive adhesive, and the PET spacer, which creates room for the fluid to flow through. The pump membranes are set into the PET spacer. Finally, we add another layer of adhesive and sandwich a PCB on top. Then we add a silicon membrane at the very top, and this is the part that contacts our skin and actually forms. And this, I'm now holding something, so <laughs> this is how thin our full stack has to grow. It's um, pretty hard to see. Very so we end up with these fingertip size arrays of 32 electron wanted pumps. As you can see, each haptic array is only a bit bigger and a couple times thicker than a penny. We can individually actuate every haptic pixel in the array with full programmatic digital control, and we can create salient shapes and animations right on your fingertip. Our glove uses 3D printed finger clips to hold the arrays, with electric flex cables connecting to the wrist-worn electronic skin. We also, of course, have a tethered version of the glove for continuous power. Now for our software implementation. We created a PCB prefab that matched the placement of the pumps exactly. And we attached these to the Oculus Hands module at roughly the same location as they would be physically. Each haptic pixel has a collision script so that when it collides with objects in Unity, the appropriate serial command is transmitted. The collided pixels on the index finger are in red on the bottom left, mirrored above on an actual array. You can see the user touching the face of the box and then sliding the finger off the edges. To validate our work, we did a series of performance evaluations on the array. First, since our skin is directly contacting the haptic arrays, it's important to measure the block pressure, which is the amount of pressure generated under force. As we vary the voltage over time at one hertz, the pressure and current vary accordingly. 
Prior work shows that 10 to 30 kilopascal of pressure is needed to feel a light touch on our fingertips, and our system achieves 50 kilopascal consistently. Here is the current and pressure directly compared to voltage. Uh, the donut shape of the pressure response is indicative of hysteresis, where the pressure lacks behind voltage, likely due to a small compliance, but overall is relatively linear. And then finally, the pressure response for a single pixel, where the dark line is a model fit to the data with a rise time of 112 milliseconds. To evaluate best case deformation, we measured the no load displacement response that the eight pixels indicated. Most pixels underwent rapid inflation, hitting 0.3 to 0.5 millimeter displacement in the first half second which is the height of a standard rail bar. Deformation rate then slows until it reaches a max displacement of just over one millimeter in three seconds on average. We also wanted to evaluate our performance at a range of frequencies. As many haptic stimuli require different rapid signals, and our fingertips are most sensitive between 10 and 300 hertz. On the left, we see that displacement is inversely proportional to the frequency, which makes sense because at higher frequency, there's less time for flow to accumulate, leading to less deformation. However, I want to note that dis displacement at a higher frequency still exists within the range of human tactile perception. <clears throat> Finally, we characterize the power consumption of our system, which you can find details about in the paper. As a baseline, we did a comparison to common haptic actuator with two common haptic stimuli. Our click effect is similarly efficient to mature technologies like piezo motors or linear resonant actuators. And at present, our buzz effect is twice as energy expensive, but of course, this is still a prototype that could be further optimized. Now I'll go into the expressivity that fluid reality gloves are capable. The most basic and fundamental haptic effect we can convey is the sense of physical contact. For example, users can grip and push objects in this physics playground scene. And similarly, this violin scene demonstrates the ability to render fine-grained contact. We implemented contact textures like the smoothness of a marble, the roughness of rock, the ridges of a water bottle, and the bumpy surface of a basketball. We also implemented spatial textures using what we call underlying haptic textures, which is the second row. Here, the white pixels correlate to haptics on and the black with haptics off. Note how the haptic textures roughly mirror the visual textures. So we have a variety of textures from our immersion, including metal grain, and you can clearly see the regular ridges that the user is feeling. Uh, we have wood grain, where the lines are a bit noisier, but as you can see, the user, when the user moves horizontally, they roughly follow the grain. And we also have like pimply skin, where you can feel the individual fleshy belts of the pimples. Uh, it's very hard to imagine what this feels like just by looking at it, but you can come to our demo to try these out tonight. We're able to model compliance by activating pixels radiating outward from the center of the pad, increasing pressure on the finger. This is a tactile illusion first described by Silingo et al. Using this principle, we imbue objects with varying compliances, from a very compliant or soft spring, a medium compliant hand, to a non-compliant or hard block of mar marble. We also create different haptic pressure profiles for UI widgets, including a buckling spring effect, a normal button press, and slider bar intense. We have object and environment bound haptic animations that play on the finger. Here, the user can feel the wind as flights, the vibrations of the fan motor, the falling water drops, and then the electrical sparks from the object. <laughs> Finally, the accuracy of the tactile sensation from our haptic glove opens the possibility of eye screen interaction and touch typing in the future. To better characterize our glove's expressivity, we did a huge user study with many task categories. I don't have time to go over the whole thing, so please see our paper for more details. Uh, one of our set of tasks was focused on shape recognition, including static shapes, animated shapes, and shape matching, where the user matched the visual shape to the haptic one they were feeling. Here we have the results of the task recognition, uh, re represented as recognition accuracy matrices. The main takeaway is that even for these complicated and large sets of stimuli, users are quite accurate overall, and they did best in recognizing the animated shapes. We also want to evaluate users' perceptions of optic properties. For this, we have texture matching, where participants change the visual texture to match the haptic one, and compliance matching, where we have five random click boxes that have different inherent compliances. Uh, participants would press down on each box and rank them from softest to hardest, with no visual cues provided. Again, we see very strong accuracies, and for compliance, actually every single trial but one was 100% accurate. We also have a whole bunch of qualitative results that I unfortunately don't have any time to go over. So thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, Joe and Craig have actually spun this work into a new startup called Fluid Reality, so visit their website for updates. And again, please come to the demo session tonight to try out our technology.